Nikki, for those that have not been following your online campaign against the abuse and culture in BG, can you explain why we are here? Um, yep, certainly. Um, first of all, it's not just my campaign, um, it's a lot of voices. We're raising a lot of voices and a lot of concerns. Um, basically, I found a tweet, um, or a, a Twitter, a tweet, um, when I was searching to, uh, for Stuart Woods um, in... I'm not going to get cross about this. Hang on. So, uh, about the summer when um, the lockdowns had just started, we were trying to um, rent a gym. I emailed and messaged quite a few um, big gyms um, and one of them was a connection of Redham Gymnastics Club. I asked them, um, I said I couldn't get hold of Stuart um, and could I possibly rent your gym? Um, in which they responded that um, he hadn't been in the gym for another five months um, and to put me onto two other gymnastics clubs in which I did go and find uh, somewhere to rent. Uh, I then thought, well, that's a bit strange because I'd seen him in March 2020 outside the Southern Qualifiers um, in Burgess Hill um, and he said there was an allegation. Uh, now you guys, you guys, uh, might have heard the same story as me. Um, he said there was no evidence, uh, there was no text messages, no nothing. So the, the police had taken his laptop, they couldn't find anything. Not one smidge, it was all going to get thrown out. Um, and he, you know, had spread this story, everybody had heard this story. Um, I thought, well, if, it's, if I saw him in March, and then he's still five months later, still not in the gym, maybe this allegation and this story that I'd heard wasn't actually the truth. Uh, so me and my husband, Colton, um, we started sniffing around, asking a few people, and everybody had heard the same story. Um, so we dug a little further, we went outside, um, outside connections, and then I finally found a tweet uh, on the 7th of September to say that he'd been convicted um, of sexual um, assaults, um, sorry, three counts of sexual activity with children, and a further two counts of sexual communication with children. Um, I was horrified, absolutely horrified. Um, I then put the feelers out again and um, to see if anybody had heard anything about this. Not, nothing, nobody, nobody knew, nobody in the team gym community, and I reached out to a lot of people. Um, I then sniffed around just to make sure that it was true. Um, I contacted the journalist uh, that was in the court during the trial um, and it was true. So, me and Colton, um, me being one, thought, well, if nobody's talking and everybody has heard the same story as us, um, somebody's lying. How did these stories get through? Uh, Team Jim, especially. Um, so, I dug a bit more. <laughs> I asked a few more questions. Um, and we found out that the sentencing was actually on the 17th of September. Um, so this wasn't a choice for me. I, I had to go to the sentencing. I had to hear it from my own eyes because I knew Stuart. Um, I coached with Stuart. Um, I judged with Stuart. Um, I even tutored him um, judging, I think, at one stage. Um, but he'd been around in the sport since the start, not the sport, the discipline since the start. Um, so I needed, I needed answers. So. Me and Colton um, then obviously reached out to a few more people and once people finally found out that he, there was an actual conviction and it was a true story and there was evidence and everything that everybody had been told was wrong um, and for me to be outside and speak to him at a southern qualifying British gymnastics tournament in March 2020 absolutely disgusted me to my core. How dare they put me in that, that position? If I'd had a team in that, that competition, which I did the day before, I could have taken my kids, my own gymnast, to see him, my own children to see him. How dare they? Then I find out that he was actually allowed to manage from afar. Now, who made this decision? Who said that somebody who was arrested in 2019, October 2019, that he could manage from afar? Who no. in the organisation would have the power to make that decision? Who knew? At the time, who knew? So I looked at the chain of command. Um, 
obviously a lot of people knew Stuart. I don't think there's probably one person in Team Gin that didn't know Stuart. Um, he was a tutor, uh, he was a coach, he was a unit leader, I think he's been a zonal leader, he was on TV promoting his own club, um, he's been at this club, that club, zonal clubs, I mean he's been everywhere, absolutely everywhere since the start. So the only people that could have known him would have been his mentor, um, the chairman, uh, British Gymnastics, whoever put the chairman in the position, um, the performance manager. I mean, somebody must have answers, right? I would certainly agree with that. Um, have, in the time of uh, his investigation and obviously your meetings with him at certain events, have BG told you anything? Have you had, have you had any notification nope. whatsoever? Nope. Nobody. Nobody. Or at least anybody that I've spoken to, and I'm sure people would, somebody would have said, I'm waiting for somebody to say to me, Nikki, please stop. We have the answers. We've contacted the people. We have answers. We're going to say sorry. Have BG themselves um, apologised to you or the survivors nope. or anyone connected nope. with the and, and forget my apology. I'm, I'm OK. Like, this is... This. I'm disgusted with what they did to me, um, but other people, they were in the gym in June, July. Set people up, but it would have been a set up because that person didn't know that they'd been convicted. Very true. Give them the choice. This man has been convicted. He's allowed to manage from afar. Do you want to go and associate yourself with him? Because I certainly wouldn't have done. And I was, I was messaging the man. I was Facebook messaging him, saying, oh, why would a kid do this to you, Stuart? You know, what, there's no evil children. Why, would, why, in his position, why would one child think, I know what, I'm going to take the whole sport down, the whole man down? Children don't do that. Children do not do that. There has to... Look. If you want to stop at any time, no. you can. No. No. But can I... Just try not to swear. Can you tell me what... What rumour or... How can I put this? Why did you believe he could have been innocent? Um, or did you at any stage believe he could have been innocent? I, I well, I, I didn't know the stuff, well. Do I? No. Just want to go back to something you just previously said. You was messaging Stuart, and obviously you said that you met Stuart at a tournament last year. Can I ask, what was the conversation with regards to why? And why was you messaging him? What, what was the understanding of his position? I felt sorry for him. Everybody felt, felt sorry for them. We'd, we'd got told that he, uh, there was a disgruntled gymnast that got booted out of the team. Um, he actually uh, messaged me to say that I think a gymnast left this bombshell with me. A bombshell! A bombshell! A bit more than a bombshell. And you kept it quiet? Um, I can see from your passion that this has affected you. Oh, it's affected me and a lot of others. Again, not about me. May I ask you a difficult question? Yep. Where did you get your evidence from? From the survivors. I went to the court. I had to go to the, the sentencing to hear the stories from my own ears and my husband came with me. That was on the 17th of September. Anybody could have gone. Anybody could be doing this right now. Anybody could have found that tweet when I found that when I did find the tweet and I asked people about it, nobody knew. They could have all gone to the sentencing that the information was out there on Google. Google. Am I to understand that the lack of communication from BG, the rumor of a disgruntled, the false kind of allegations presented to us? is the reason you needed to go to the court yep. to get the answer. Yep, I didn't trust anybody. If, if that, if that rumour can go round and I believe it, and people that I respect believe it, um, and once they found out and they were as disgusted as me, then I had to see it from my own eyes. Hear <laughs> it from my own ears, see it from my own eyes. Sorry. I can understand the confusion. This is a very emotional subject. Um, it's... We've got to a stage where, from what you've just obviously confessed in your own true passionate way, 
the, the organization that we represent are not being transparent enough in a very serious crisis. Nope, not at all. Am I to believe that you are the only coach speaking up about this lack of transparency? Nope, nope, and I am not just coach, this is judge as well. You know, I was a gymnast, I was a coach, I am a coach, and I'm a judge. And I've been on B British Gymnastics Workforce, I've tutored. I need to, moving forward, because obviously tomorrow, there is the Team Gym British Final. Yep. Uh, your campaign has highlighted some, how can we put it, imbalance in the adjudication that would have presided over without your campaign. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me in your honest words, what about the British scared you prior to your intervention? And the confidence that you may have in tomorrow's event, or lack of confidence, I don't really know where you stand. How, if you could just- I have more confidence. I have more confidence now that Scotland's um, more involved. For what reason? Um, why is Scotland involved? Um, because there's a superior jury that's supposed to um, be present at the British Championships. Um, and after all of this, after the sentencing, um, after me going public, um, after hearing so many stories that were heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking, and people I didn't, I don't even know these people, um, parents, um, gymnasts, ex-gymnasts, um, there, there, there's just, there's just so many. Um, what was the question again? I just, I've forgotten it myself oh, because, sorry. like I um, think, oh. well, I think people will see. Um, there's a reason why I admire you um, from a, a coaching standpoint and just as a person. Your passion is so profound for this sport. It's very easy to get lost in the moment. Um, I'll be honest, listening to your passion, I forgot the question I asked myself. But what I think we need to do is, and I think this podcast could go on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll hold it there and maybe we elaborate on another episode because I believe everything you've said so far will resonate within our community. Um, but to repeat the question, if I think <laughs> that I asked, I will check on the edit. Um, your confidence, your reasonings oh. behind the British Championships that's going to be happening tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, your thoughts. Um, yeah, so um, it's a long story, a really long story. Um, but from since since the sentencing on the 17th of September, five weeks ago, British Gymnastics, the chairman, the technical committees, um, the coaches involved, not one person has said sorry. Not one person. Where's the teammates? This is Team Gym. Where's the support? Where is it? That breaks my heart. When I, I didn't know these people, and me and Colton waited after the sentencing. Colton thought that they were gonna punch him in the face, <laughs> which he would have taken, which he said, he, and I know he would have done, he would have taken it. Um, and those families came up to us, and some weren't gymnasts. Um, and we listened and we listened more. And those kids came to me and I held them in my arms. I asked the parents if I could um, talk to the children who are now young adults. And uh, they just wanted to be listened to. No, they just wanted someone to hear them. They raised concerns, they were bullied, they were assaulted. They were betrayed, and like one of them said, you're not a bad man, you're a monster. And the judge agreed with that. The judge said that, and I heard him. He also got 20 years restraining order because of his obsession and infatuation. These are the words that I heard of these kids. How can a coach be infatuated and obsessed 
with children. And then not say anything about that. And then these people, these people still support him now. I think we'll take a break there, Mrs. Webster, because I think before I cry or you cry, mm -hmm. this is a very serious issue. So yeah, so the, um, when, I, when we came home from the sentencing, bear in mind we spent three hours with those families, um, which we previously had no idea who they were. Um, we drove home, um, the car broke, um, came in, two kids, picked them up, missed the class. Um, thankfully my team taught the class, uh, my coaches. Um, and then I quickly, obviously put the kids to bed, um, quickly grabbed something to eat. Me and Colton got to sit in the office and I went to obviously uh, tell uh, my close colleagues that had been with me from the start, um, you know, my new findings. Um, and someone had got there before me. Uh, and what I heard was absolutely disgusting. Um, how? I, I just, I have no words. Um, what did you hear? If you, if you can still say that there was no evidence and make jokes and mention names after what I heard a sentencing, I don't know you. I don't know you. I thought I knew some of these people. I don't know them. Wow. You're telling me that someone that didn't go to the court who didn't hear the evidence yep. was saying that there was no evidence. Yep. Why? Um, because she'd been told by somebody else from above, apparently. One of the uh, most or profound things that hit me was I never really realised about the anonymity. Mm. Um, can you describe in your own words how you felt when you realised the profound effect that has on this situation? Um, to not, not be able to talk, uh, um, I have no idea. I, I can't even think about my own children um, going through that. I, I, I know, me, me and Carl just wouldn't be able to cope with that. <laughs> just, uh, these families are amazing. These survivor families are amazing. How they kept quiet and got um, accused themselves and bullied and manipulated um, and even asked for money for trips they could no longer go to because Stuart was involved with. I mean, who does that? Who does that? Wow. The, wow. the judge can't be lying. The unanimous jury can't be lying. Stuart Woods is convicted. And still, even today, after those messages, still people support him. When you say support, how much support have you heard? What, what, what would you describe as support? Uh, I, th I, think, I think the whole discipline is groomed. I think, I think people still love him. And I'm just talking about coaches in position, officials in position, um, people of power, power. Um, but just whatever. Whatever, these people should not be in charge of children. These people should not be in charge of children because it spreads. Whatever, whatever ethos you have in your club as a person, um, as a team of coaches, it spreads. Kids, kids follow, you know? Every kid wants that somebody. And Stuart was that somebody for a lot of people, a lot of people. And then they can't accept it. But, but that's fine. I still haven't got a problem with that. But he's convicted and some people out there that your ethos might be sending is spreading to them. And those people might want to talk. I know a hell of a lot of hell, of, hell of a lot of them have come to me. I know a lot have come to Colton and I've spread people to other people who don't, who, you know, don't want to speak to me. I've even speak to people that I've never spoken to for like 20 years, but I've offered them a line because this is gymnastics and gymnastics is gymnastics. It doesn't matter if you're team gym, if you're artistic, if you're rhythmic, if you're trampolining, if you're cheerleading and tumbling. I'm trying to get them all now because somebody's going to pull me up on that. I think I've got that. Freestyle? Freestyle? Maybe. Preschool? A anything. Gymnastics is gymnastics and we are one voice. One voice to say no more. If they cannot acknowledge a survivor of a convicted 
Great Britain coach in five weeks and that most they can do is send two uncovered statements that I've managed to find. How are they going to listen to the small thing? How are they going to listen to somebody calling you a, a I don't know if I can say the word, um, a not very nice word, running up? How can they call people fat? How, you know, it, that, who, who are these people going to go to? Well, can I ask a question which probably chilled me more? I mean, and we've heard some chilling things over the past six weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, that there are rumours that coaches are visiting him. Mm -hmm. Can I ask your honest feelings of how you felt when you heard? Sickened. That... Absolutely sickened. I don't know if they're true. Um, apparently prison records aren't um, the public knowledge. I did try and get some, but obviously I didn't dig that far. Um, but the rumours are the rumours. The rumours do come from somewhere and, you know, ask the questions. Ask the questions, find out where the rumours come from, find out if there's any truth in it. That's all I can do. Can you know, you I heard a rumour, I went to find out the truth, the rumour was wrong. I told people the truth, more rumours started, I asked more questions, I got to the truth. Can I ask, with your elaborate brain, can you think of any reason, any reason whatsoever, that a coach would visit a convicted sex offender? No. Or any, oh. any, any, is there any positive oh, message I'm, you can see that a child could pick up no. on that? No, it, it, it's about the coach now, isn't it? I, don't, I really don't think any kids have gone to visit Stuart. Um, I don't think any children have, um, have messaged him. I don't think they're asking him for advice. Why would you? There's, got, there's, a, there's better coaching than Stuart. There always has been. But Stuart fitted the limelight. Wow. So... To me, um, I think it's very clear, if the rumours are true that coaches are visiting a convicted sex offender, that that wouldn't be a positive image to portray BG, nope. or portray us fellow coaches, and obviously, like yourselves, Definitely at the top not level. Me. Well, yeah, you're the top level, so I would assume that that, you'd probably take quite a front, the fact that- I did take a front. We could get tarred with that. I did take that. a front. So. What's your, what's your thoughts on that as an image for BG, or do you think that should be allowed to happen? I put it, I, I wrote an email, <laughs> another email. Um, I found uh, my performance manager um, was, uh, hang on, let me get this right. Left due to minor restructure in the spring. Um, so I have a new performance manager, which I found out, I think, uh, a week and a bit ago. Um, he got back to me straight away um, with my concerns of the superior jury. I thought, excellent, maybe we've got somebody here. Um, meanwhile, Carlton was going through welfare because that's who he was dealing with. Um, and then uh, he said, thanks for flagging it. Um, and basically the chairman um, was unavailable for duties. Um, and if I needed, uh, I think, Oh, because there would be some of the superior jury were chosen because they were at European uh, going to the European Championships, um, in which I then responded. Um, oh, I thought the ex performance manager was going as well. So when you were selected them in February 2020 for December 2020, where the Euros were going to be in Denmark. Um, they can, it can change then because obviously the performance manager is now not there and you're there. Um, so, you know, people can move. It's a fluid situation, isn't it? Um, and I, I don't think Stuart was uh, convicted then. So a lot's changed. Lot's changing. In your humble opinion, I think there's a lot we could go through and I think we might have to extend this podcast over many weeks. So I'm going to try and draw to the conclusion um, that, in your opinion, who is responsible for this toxic culture that's now the become? As simple as that. Yep. And any any links that he's um, he's pushed through, he poisoned me. He poisoned. Yeah, I've heard many a story. He's been between many uh, an argument, a tiff, a retirement, a push out, a demotion. Um, I personally lost. Um, my career 
um, for something I fed back in 2018. Excuse about me? Can you, well, what do you mean you lost your career? Excuse me? Um, he, uh, the, the chairman at the time threatened, um, he didn't want me to write anything career ending um, in, because he'd asked me for my feedback on the 2018 um, European Championships in Portugal. Um, so I wrote my feedback that he asked me for on his Google Documents form um, and it was too fiery, uh, too aggressive. Um, I, would, I didn't want to be seen to be going after any one particular coach. Um, some of these coaches were young and I would shatter their dreams. Um, so I listened, I got advice um, from people that I respected um, and still do, some of them. Um, and I simmered my feedback down. Um, I still included what I felt, um, but as not as aggressive. Um, and he then said that he wouldn't want me to do anything career ending um, and my feedback, we would see how my feedback would fare in the other 60 positive feedbacks. Um, then after that, I never tutored uh, judging again. But I've still got my club and my career because me and my husband do a lot of things apart from gymnastics. Um, so my career is fine, but my tutoring and extra income I could um, earn, um, yeah, that stopped, yeah. Do you know what's so sad about that? Um, okay, you know, people might think I'm biased because I'm your husband, but if people truly knew me, if you was rubbish, I'd tell you. <laughs> yeah, <he was>. <laughs> right? <laughs> Excuse me, but I am that honest. Um, but it's the fact that that manipulation has denied many upcoming coaches, yeah. upcoming judges, because... Yeah. And fast-tracked the fast-tracked people that he would see in the future could be useful. Yeah, but what I mean is, what I, what I was going to say was, to me, it's denying those upcoming coaches and judges your experience. I mean, yeah. you know, and again, this is not in a sycophantic way because you are my wife. You happen to be the second highest brevet in the country. You happen to be... Uh, well, well, that's kind of changed now as well. I, th I think it's still changed. I'm still... Oh, I was still, I, yeah, I never did get my answer about that. Yeah, he was going to find out in a meeting in some country, Bratzlville. But reg regardless of the, the shenanigans that's going on within the top, I am saying that not only are you one of the, the second highest brevet in the country, You've done Europeans, you've done British, you've seen it from every angle. You've mm -hmm. seen it from a coach's point of view, a judge's point of view, and you've been a champion in every aspect. Your, your success knows no bound. Um, there are coaches that judge, there are judges that coach, but as a combined, I think you've got the longest record and the most experience. Um, considering that you started yourself off again 10 years ago with your own business from zero. I remember two mm -hmm. kids in a hut doing forward roles to us taking school children to the British Championships and we've never even had a gym. So to deny upcoming talent your experience of someone who's a hands-on grassroots specialist seems ridiculous to me, no matter how narcissistic you are. Well, see, this is why um, when, I, when I was in favour um, and he thought he could use me, um, and I started tutoring in 2015, 16, I think. No, 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 it must have been 2015. Yeah, so I went on the full workforce in 2015. Um, and I absolutely loved it. And I thought because I was working with adults, obviously in the judging field, um, I could maybe, as I'm teaching them, I could cleanse the fairness through the judging adult side so that at least the kids being judged were fair. I couldn't get into the, each coaching at the time and I could feel the poison kind of going, um, already leaking through. But I thought if, if the kids can at least be judged fairly, um, you know, we've got a chance. And that was the plan. But obviously in 2018, <laughs> that plan stopped. And then look what happened. Wow. Mrs. Webster, I'm going to cut it there because I think you could expand on every topic. I think what you've said already has been profound. Um, and if I'm honest, I'll leave it, I'll leave it open to the gymnast and, and, and other people that want to be involved. If you want to see more, let us know. But I think we'll be doing this again. And anybody else who wants to come on, I've already got um, 
seven people that will um, appear. Um, obviously, it depends on what I look like. Um, and I've also got people that just want to write statements um, and just put it out there anonymously. So, uh, you know, anything, it's all good with us. I mean, I will edit it in, but uh, the, the most profound thing I want everyone to hear is this is not just from a judge's mouth or a coach's mouth or, you know, this is from a, a woman, a mother's mouth. 